Welcome back. While the South African National Blood Service is looking into using blood plasma from recovered COVID-19 patients to treat those infected, the organization is set to start phase two of the clinical trials to test the safety and effectiveness of the collected plasma. It will then be used in clinical trials. So for more on this now, Marion Vermillion from the South African National Blood Service joins us uh, via Skype from Johannesburg. Marion, thanks a lot for joining us uh, this evening. I think the big question, Marion, is how does it all work? Good evening, Faith. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, so it, we don't know yet whether it works, but the, the theory um, of how it works is that the um, people uh, develop antibodies when they are ill, and uh, those antibodies are stored in your plasma component of your blood. Mm -hmm. So how it works is you have you've, um, a person's infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. The immune system develops those antibodies. Um, and then we collect that plasma and give those antibodies passively to a patient who's currently ill with the virus. And the hope is that um, the, vi the, the, the antibodies will then uh, fight, the, uh, fight the virus while the patient's body is still trying to develop their own antibodies. Yeah. And then the hope is that the virus won't replicate as fast as it normally would and also that hopefully the patient becomes better sooner. Yeah. Mar milder disease. Marion, one thing that comes into mind is the issue around uh, reinfection. So we saw, I think one of the stories that was coming out of Hong Kong, uh, a patient actually found themselves reinfected with COVID-19 even after having recovered from the virus. So in that sense, one wonders how effective these uh, antibodies are. In the South African context, if you have to bring matters back home, are you finding that uh, you've got uh, these reinfected individuals because we can't account at this stage? And uh, how then do you start telling that these antibodies are indeed going to be effective? So I have no idea at all about um, whether somebody can be reinfected or not. I mean, there's been talks that possibly there could be false um, positive um, test results. Um, and, I, and we don't um, test people routinely diagnostically. So I, I don't know whether there are any people in South Africa who have been reinfected other than what we, you know, we hear on the news. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, that's why this um, convalescent plasma has to be used in a clinical trial because we have to see whether it actually will work. It worked for um, SARS-1 and it worked for MERS, but we have to still determine whether it actually will work for COVID-19. And that's why it does need to be done through a clinical trial. Yeah. So are you looking for people that have tested positive and then have subsequently recovered from the virus? Um, and, and, you know, exactly how is it that you're finding these uh, individuals or subjects to actually um, get the plasma from or even run these clinical trials on? So it, it's really, really difficult. Um, we, we obviously, NICD, who have all the, have the, the, all the names of the people who have been infected, mm -hmm. are not allowed to give that information to us. So the only way that we can get donors to come forward is actually through these kind of media, where people see it on the news, um, and then they, and then they come um, forward to us. We've also given out posters to doctors who are treating patients with COVID-19 and asking them that when the patient has recovered um, to please give our leaflet or information pamphlet to them so that if they are interested, they can then contact us. Yeah. So we have to wait for donors to contact us. But I'm sure Potential rigorous donors. tests are actually conducted, Marion, and the reason why I ask this is because South Africa has been known to have a lot of uh, infection rates, but unfortunately um, non-symptomatic, or many of the individuals are not displaying any symptoms, right? So just because that person is not coughing or sneezing or does, does not have a fever does not necessarily mean that that person is not COVID-19 positive. So those subjects that come forward and say, listen, I had it and I'm healthy, We'd have to conduct, I'm sure you're conducting then rigorous tests to ensure that indeed they're completely cleared of the virus and then the subsequent tests that take place from there on. Absolutely. So the, uh, we, the first primary, the first um, eligibility criteria is that they had to have had a positive RT-PCR test. Um, so they have to have proof that they actually were infected. And there has to be at least 28 days that have passed since that positive test. Um, and that's so that they can have cleared the virus and no longer be infectious. And then when, we, when they um, enroll, we then will do um, a number of tests. So we have to, uh, and there we have to test um, for the antibodies to make sure that the antibodies are there and that they're of a high enough teeter to be able to be um, used in, in, this, in this potential treatment.
Mm. The procedure itself and the treatment itself, is it invasive or how does it work? Is it painful? Uh, how do you ensure that indeed that transition actually how it takes place uh, with the patient now? Uh, so, for the donor, so for the donor, um, it's exactly the same as donating any kind of blood product. Um, so there will be a, a needle that needs to go into the arm and, and then we will collect the blood. So for, for convalescent plasma, it's called a plasmapheresis process, um, a procedure, and how that works is the, um, still the needle goes into the arm, it collects the whole blood, the whole blood is in, in, um, in an inch, goes through an instrument where it's centrifuged and the red cells are then given back to the donor. So it really, the, the amount of pain is really the, uh, the prick of a needle um, that you would have when you would normally donate blood. Yeah. For the recipient, it will be like having a drip. So it's ex exactly the same as having a drip um, put in place and then transfusion will then occur through that. And if I'm a person that actually contracted COVID-19 in one stage and I've subsequently recovered fully and I want to be part of this uh, uh, test and actually donate uh, the antibodies, how then do I start getting in contact with you, uh, Marin? So the best way is to go onto our website. Um, it's www.sanbs.org.za. Uh, when you go onto the website, there's a, a red button basically that you can click that says become a convalescent plasma donor. You'll then capture your details in there and our research nurse will contact you back within a, within a week. Um, we have had, we've been quite busy at the moment um, and, so, and we only have two ladies who are doing this, so it, it does take them some time. Um, they will then contact you and then they will ask you a number of questions. So the, they need to be able to determine one, that you are healthy enough to be a blood donor, that you meet the eligibility criteria. And then if you meet all of those um, things, they will tell you about the study and then exactly what it will entail from you and also what we're going to do for the patient. Um, and if you're still then interested, the research nurse will then set up an appointment for you to give your first set of specimens where we just do all the, all the tests and then if those are all okay, you can then come in every two weeks and donate um, an apheresis plasma unit. Marion Vermeulen, we'll leave it there from the South African National Blood Service. There you have it, innovation, where uh, actual blood plasma from recovered COVID-19 patients is being used to treat those infected with COVID-19.